Welcome back to the JPS YouTube channel guys. Today's topic is quite simply three effective tips for better training. Now the goal of today's video is to provide you with three tips that are practically applicable, tips that you can apply immediately to your own training and see some better results. So the goal is to ensure that your training becomes more productive and more effective. Now you may ask, are these tips necessary to build some muscle and you know, make some progress? And the answer is probably no. Okay, there's many people out there who spend hours in the gym, get some decent results and make progress. But really, these people could probably be benefiting from these tips because if you imply what I speak about today, then you would probably be able to get a better effect from your training in a shorter period of time. And I think this is really important for the wider population. So without further ado, I'm going to get right into it. And the first thing that I want to speak about today is repetition speed. So I highly recommend paying attention to your repetition speed with each and every set. And what I'm specifically talking about here is the speed of the concentric portion of your repetitions. So remember, we have both a concentric and an eccentric portion to a repetition. If we're talking about a bicep curl, the upward portion, the contraction would be the concentric phase and the lowering of the dumbbell would be the negative portion of the rep or the eccentric portion. So when the goal is muscle growth, the speed of the concentric portion of your repetitions is really important because when speed starts to drop off, when those reps become a lot slower, even though you are pushing really hard to get that dumbbell up, the tension on the target muscles will be really high. So like I said, in the context of muscle growth, this is really important. So if you complete a set and the repetition speed has not dropped off at all from rep one to let's say rep 10, is that really a productive set? And in the context of muscle growth, not really. So I highly recommend paying attention to when the speed of your reps starts to drop off. And this should really be evident when you're about five reps shy from failure. At this point, you should be making the, the best effort to make the most of each and every one of those reps and ensuring that how hard you push those reps and how far you take them is based on how hard the set is actually prescribed to be because this will obviously vary based on you know where you are in your program and and how hard you actually want to be pushing the exercise so research does show that when the speed of the concentric portion of the repetition starts to slow down, muscle growth tends to be greater. So if you are stopping your sets before repetition speed drops off, just because it feels hard, you're probably compromising some growth. Okay, whether it feels hard because you have a deep burn in your muscles, because you're huffing and puffing, or because you just can't be stuffed, well, you know, terminating your sets because of these reasons, like I said, from a muscle growth standpoint is really not what we are after, okay? And we need to ensure that repetition speed is slowing down because our muscles are getting fatigued. And I'm gonna come back to this in a second. So what I recommend here is asking yourself after each set, did the speed of my repetitions actually drop off significantly now, from the first few reps to the last few reps. And you have to remember that this will be a learning curve. Every time you ask yourself this question, you'll have a better understanding of you know, how hard you can train and, and where your limits lie. Now, this brings me to my second tip. So I mentioned earlier, just because a set feels hard, that doesn't mean it is effective. Okay, and there's a difference between hard sets and effective sets. So usually people get mixed up between the two, okay? And they think that just because a set feels hard, that it's probably gonna be good enough to get a training effect and to get the response that they want. But this sort of training, uh, this sort of thinking, sorry, this sort of faulty thinking can be a major limitation to their progress. <clears throat> now, let me describe some ways training can feel hard, okay? The first thing I want, I want to mention is that with every set you do, there is a cardiovascular and a respiratory demand, okay? For example, when you're squatting, let's say you do a set of 10 reps with a squat, towards the end of that set, you're probably going to be huffing and puffing, okay? It's gonna be hard to get air in. Now, 
Terminating a set just because of that doesn't mean that the quadriceps, which are the target muscle in this case, have experienced enough tension, okay? And that doesn't even mean that the repetitions, the speed of the repetitions has dropped off. So again, a set that comes with a high aerobic demand may feel hard, but for muscle growth, that may not be a very effective set, okay? We also have some sets that may come with a high degree of discomfort, and this is dependent on the exercise that you are doing, and also dependent on the amount of reps you are doing, okay? The discomfort or the deep sensation that you may feel within a muscle can also give you the feeling of hard training, okay? But again, if you stop your set just because it feels really hard and discomfort is high, okay, but the repetition speed hasn't dropped off, well, again, that is another set that may be compromised in its effectiveness. So those are just two, um, two considerations. There are other things that may influence how hard a set may feel. For now, we're going to leave it there. So once again, you need to pay attention to this and ask yourself after each set, were there any limitations to my performance and my ability to terminate each set at the right point? Okay, this is the type of thought process you need to have after a set and you need to match it up with the repetition uh, speed that I spoke about earlier. So now my last point, which will help tie everything together, is exercise execution. Okay, so we need to be executing exercises properly. Okay, now what does this mean? Because, you know, good technique, what is that? What does that encompass? Well, there are many factors that we need to consider. Okay, but for today, we're going to keep it quite simple. I'm gonna provide you with some factors that, again, you can apply immediately to pretty much any exercise and improve the effectiveness of that exercise. So the first consideration is to ensure that you are taking the muscle, the target muscle, through its full range of motion. So remember, there is a difference between the joints range of motion, which is usually termed passive range of motion, and this refers to taking the exercise into a range in which there is no further muscle contraction. Okay, maybe from a hypertrophy standpoint, that may not be something that we need to do. Okay, so keep it, we need to keep that in mind. Okay, we need to ensure we keep tension on the muscles and we take those target muscles through the greatest range possible. This is dependent on the exercise and there may be some exceptions, but for the most part, this is what we should be aiming to do. The second consideration is ensuring that there is consistency between repetitions. Okay, so the first point here is technical consistency. Your technique needs to be maintained from rep to rep, but also there should be a terminal start and end point for each repetition. Okay, so you know, you, you finish a repetition at a specific point, okay, and you start at a specific point too, and that stays consistent from rep to rep. That is really important, and when we combine that with a full range of motion, then it actually makes it quite easy to track progress over time. Okay, if we you know, finish and start reps in different positions all the time, then how are we going to ensure that our progress as weeks go by is reliable? Okay, some weeks may, we may be doing some partial reps, other weeks we may be doing a greater range of motions uh, through our training, and that can really blur uh, some of the progression that we experience over time. Now, another consideration is to ensure that you take time setting up. Okay, your setup, your setup position is going to be conducive to how you want the exercise to be performed. Okay, so it will definitely influence how the movement plays out and it's probably in your best interest to take time getting yourself into a good position, making sure that your joints are lined up well, the muscle fibers you are targeting are in line with load and the line of pull and you are in a position that is going to influence positively how the movement is played out. The last thing I want to speak about here, revolving around exercise execution, is to prioritize stability. Now, stability doesn't mean just having joints in a fixed position or a lack of movement, okay? What we can say about stability here is that first, it does depend on the exercise. So for example, when you're doing a bicep curl, 
you do wanna keep the shoulder in a fairly fixed position because that's going to ensure that there is enough stability, internal stability, for the biceps to do as much work possible throughout elbow flexion. But on the other hand, if we're looking at a side raise, okay, or a lateral raise, having a high degree of stability through the shoulder may actually not be a good idea because that will restrict our movement. Okay, if we're focusing on, for example, depressing our scapula as we do a side raise, that is going to restrict the amount of tension that our lateral delts can experience. So internal stability for some exercises is really important. Okay, for others, you may have to be a little bit smarter about that. Those are just examples, okay? And along with internal stability, we also have external stability, and this is important too. So this means stability that is more global in nature. So for example, when you're doing a seated row on a cable row machine, you prop your feet up on the pads, okay, for external stability, okay? Imagine doing a seated row without your feet on those pads, it would be very hard, it would be very uncomfortable, and really you wouldn't have much stability to complete the movement appropriately, okay? Other machines like, you know, leg presses and hack squats, they come with external stability as well, okay? But that, you know, just because they do come with external stability doesn't mean that you don't need to focus on staying tight and, and, and upholding some internal stability too, okay? So focusing on internal and external stability will ensure that secondary muscles have a lower chance of kicking in, okay, and will ensure that the target muscles are doing most of the work. Okay, like I said, this is exercise dependent. I just wanna put that out there and maybe we can uh, make a, another video on this topic in the future. So after your sets, okay, again, ask yourself, have I performed this exercise with enough range of motion? Okay, were the reps consistent? Okay, maybe you can record yourself to provide yourself with an objective way of kind of measuring that. Did I get my setup right? And was I stable enough? Again, these are some thoughts that should be going through your head after the completion of a set. And if we combine them, okay, with repetition speed and the other uh, aspect which I spoke about, um, revolving around you know the sensation of training, whether it was actually a hard set whether the muscles actually felt the, the tension and it wasn't, the, the set wasn't limited by any other factors, we combine all these together, then you know, rest assured our training is going to be a lot more productive and a lot more effective. So guys, that's all I had for today. If you have any questions about any of that, let me know. Hopefully you can apply some of it to your training and hopefully you'll reap the rewards of these tips. That's it for now and I'll see you guys soon.